We're actually going to move into this like really cool old marina. How excited are you, Liz? Oh, this is so you can shake me down. I'm Elena, and this is Riley, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. We're currently anchored off Long Island here in the Bahamas. We came here to visit the Blue Hole. Riley really wanted to up his game and get a bit of depth because my guess is that Lenny's going to start throwing things overboard soon and we'll need a decent diver. Riley dove down to 40 metres last week, so let's see how he goes today. I was lucky enough to get to dive with William Truebridge, who's been pretty much the face of free diving for the last decade. He and his partner live on the island with their little baby. To sail to Long Island and be able to dive with the absolute elite of a sport was a pretty incredible experience. So I've just dove down to 57 meters. 50. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna call it 57 meters. Um, very, very happy with that. I was sort of before we came here. I was sort of saying 50, maybe 60, and so 57 is like incredible. It's amazing. I don't know. It was a, a goal that I had never really had, and then as I got down to Long Island, I was like, oh, maybe I should try and do something reasonably deep and um, I'm actually pretty blown away <laughs> it's like your body is supposed to do that like it's not it's not overly exerting it's not super difficult there's just a few different things that you've got to put into place um, and once you do that uh, it's I don't want to say that it's easy but it's not it's not as difficult as most people might think it was it was amazing um, being with Will and I think just knowing that he was going down to 110 meters, meters right next to me, I was like, well, I only have to go to 60, so this isn't too bad at all. I was not expecting this. We've been invited to dinner at my mate Luke and his wife Jessica's place. Luke's the local spear fisherman and fishing charter guy, and he was keen to go for a dive. They're friendly. They're super friendly. <laughs> hey, mister. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You love them. What have we got here in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Cooking up some whole bunch of different little recipes. Thanks for having us. Yeah, pleasure having you guys over. <laughs> Glad you can come. Thank you. <laughs> so funny. It's smaller than I've never had a baby do this to me. <laughs> Clearly, the highlight of the night were the baby goats. Talk about cuteness overload, as if my hormones needed any more messing with. Daisy. How excited are you, Lynn? Daisy. Thanks so much. He's so excited he's going to cry. Oh, no, don't grab the face. So, yeah, the next day I was scheduled to go spearfishing with my two new best mates, Will and Luke. With a spate of shark attacks lately, I've had a bit of a think about the whole situation and I'm still not sure where I stand. 
We were hand feeding tiger sharks at West End, which is a hugely contentious issue. I went for a solo shore dive, which I won't be doing again, and I'm torn between the Hollywood Jaws-esque culture of fear, along with humans' complete inability to calculate the odds of this kind versus, say, a heart attack, and slipping into that territory and potentially handing out some actually good advice. So for example, maybe 500,000 people will watch this video, and does every one of those people need to be made aware that knowing how to apply a good tourniquet could actually save your life in the event of a shark attack and the emergency numbers to call? No, but it might save someone's life one day. I'll probably never know. But just mentioning that sort of thing will definitely discourage people from snorkeling, swimming, etc. And there's an entire world of experiences and lessons that it would be a shame for people to miss out on. I don't really know. Papa, Papa! Bonjour. Where have you been? Me and Lenny have been um, inside doing a bit of cooking, cleaning. I just put some vegetables in the oven. Lenny's been crying most of the day. He's teething real bad. So to be honest, we've just been laying down for most of the day. Hasn't been super productive, but it's been a good day. You know how I said we didn't get many fish? When I had a look at the end, there was like a lot. How many? I think we got about eight hogs in the end. Did you just not realise? How could you miss eight hogs? Well, because usually I'm the only one that's shooting the fish. <laughs> um, if you don't say so. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I was like, oh, we didn't get that many. And then when we got back to the boat, everyone else had shot two and there was a lot in there. Wow. Forty-three dives today. So the reason it was so good was because I was with two people that were like really, really good. We did a drop down to 28 meters for two minutes, nine seconds. Wow. Which is, I mean, it's not crazy for free diving, but for spear fishing when you're lugging gear around and all that sort of stuff, it's pretty good. And I just, I feel confident doing that with those guys there. Luke runs a charter here on Long Island. I'll do a link to his email or whatever it is in the description below if you can. He is the world record holder for Kubera Snapper. It's a monster. We're officially out of food on board La Vagabond at the moment. I'm roasting up some sweet potato, onions and garlic. That's like all the vegetables we have left. We have some bananas, but they're green. Still waiting for those to go ripe very patiently. May have eaten a green one today. <laughs> so yeah, tomorrow we're actually going to move into this like really cool old marina. We met a lady named Jill and she was like, you guys should come stay, use the internet, upload a few videos. And she was really lovely and we'd just love to go in there and treat ourselves, <laughs> have a shower, have a nice long shower and make the most of land life. Go to the farmer's market. They have a farmer's market here in a few days. So that'll be awesome. Yeah, that's the plan. Make me watch all of his spear fishing videos. <laughs> and then I have to watch him again on the laptop. Can you see there's a fish over here behind that ledge? Oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. You're gonna miss the best bit. We're motoring over to the marina at high tide. So it goes on high tide in about 10 minutes. And we can go over this super shallow patch to get in there. Yeah, we're gonna park up for a few days. I can't wait to show you this marina. It's pretty weird. <laughs> in a cool way. In a good way. <laughs> Go, move it in and out. <laughs> so I'm just sitting up the front here, looking out for coral heads because we're motoring in two meters of water. And if like a coral head has grown recently, we might scrape the top of it, which we really don't want to do for the coral and for our boat. So what I'm looking out for is like dark circular patches. That's, that's usually the coral head. But at the moment, it's all pretty blue. We haven't been into a marina for like, I think since Charleston. Yeah. Like months and months and all, all of these are flat. Oh, really? <laughs> We've got enough to get by, but I'll have to pump them all up. This is what happens when I'm standing still. So it's gonna be very difficult when we're going into the marina and I have to drive and concentrate. We used to just put him inside in the bean bag where he couldn't move, but now he's become more mobile. So we don't really know what to do with him other than wear him.
drift away Just watch that's going to hit the pole there, Elena. We'll have to drop these down a bit. It's going to be nice and calm here. No wind really, so we should be fine. Um, the wind's just pushing us off the dock, which is great. We're not bashing against it for now. Spoke too soon. It's a big gust of wind. And these trees here, they're going to cause us some grief tonight. That is like mosquito and no CM haven, those pines there. They're called iron ironwood pines, ironwood trees, because their wood is very strong. You see it? No. It's directly under you. How are you going to get back up? There's a tire over there. Put that under fresh water. And rice. Nah, don't even worry about the rice. You're not gonna just put it under fresh water. Alright. We had a couple of boat jobs to do over the next few days before we'd be flying to France for the Ultrama Regatta, which we're really pumped about. We stocked up the boat with what we could from the farmers markets. The food that grows well here seems to be the herbs, potatoes and onions, bananas, papaya, coconut and coconut oil, and even honey. The people are also super crafty here making baskets and hats and jewellery. I think probably the best thing that comes on the markets here are the finger bananas. The tiniest, sweetest bananas ever. Oh my goodness, do not fall. <gasps> Bloody hell, mate. What are you feeding Lenny? Papaya. It's so nice. And this one <clears throat> is super mushy. The lady gave it to me and said I should blend it up for Lenny. And that's what I'm going to do. The best part of all of that was just how lovely everyone was in there. All saying hello, telling us where their food was from, how they made it. Finger bananas, they're super sweet and small. Like, we've been eating so many bananas lately. Sour sop, which I haven't seen in a while. Pomegranate, um, another papaya. These are like a cross between an orange and a lemon, apparently. It smells really nice. <laughs> Onions. This, I don't even know how to say the name of. But I thought I'd get give one a go. I've never eaten this before. I don't know what it is. She just said to cut it open. And the that tomato tomatoes. sauce looks good, yeah. yeah. Look at this. And you're sticking that straight on a pie floater. This is homemade tomato sauce. Everything's organic, which I think is just the coolest thing. Love has gone into this food. And we are going to love it. <laughs> Probably a bit of bacteria too, I'd say. Oh, what do you reckon about that papaya, Lenny? Hey. Did you manage to get any in your mouth? What? Good. What? <laughs> it's going to be our goal to try and make it to more farmers markets over the coming weeks. Which is always a test because we need to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> You guys, just a quick reminder about the Annapolis Boat Show. We are definitely going to be there. So we can get you guys a $5 discount on tickets if you purchase before August 18th. The website's in the link in the description below. And use our campaign code VAGABOND. Yeah, so the boat show is from the 10th till the 14th of October for those of you who maybe don't know. It's in Annapolis. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll be appearing from 10 to 11.30 a.m. on the Saturday and Sunday. We're really looking forward to meeting you guys. We've also organized to do something really cool. For those of you who might be interested in maybe sharing cool some sundowners with us. <laughs> sharing a drink or two on board the Vagabond with us. Um, if you guys would like to do that, <laughs> you can fill out a form. 
on the Annapolis Boat Show website and um, yeah, we're going to be drawing out someone's name and you can come on board, check out the boat. Hang um, out, have a couple of drinks. And not that you won't already be able yarns. to check out the boat because it is on display, but we'll be on the boat too. We can the yeah, interior. have a few drinks and yeah, share some stories. Squat around by myself and Lenny. We're also going to have some merch available, um, we'll be selling that there. And as for anyone who's a patron, we'll keep you updated on our Patreon site um, for the meetups and stuff like that. And in the live broadcast. And in our live broadcast. It's a rocky of a picture show, toss into an open road, wondering if someone might be home. So the coolest thing just happened. The Lady Jill, whose dad owns the Stella Maris Resort and the Stella Maris Marina, that we're staying at right now. Um, she's a fan of the show and she said that she'd love to treat us to a night here at the Stella Maris Resort. So we just drove down this bumpy track and where we just arrived to where they have lunch, I guess. This is called the Moonshine Bar. We're about to grab some food and be shown to our room. So this is super cool and random. Going to try and catch up on some work. Lenny can jump in the pool, do a bit of swimming. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. You have to wait a minute. We gotta work first. <laughs> yeah. If you are thinking about a holiday in this area, remember we do put the links in the description below. If you need somewhere to stay, and there's also Luke's fishing charters as well. That would make a pretty awesome combination, and there really just aren't very many places around with a blue hole as beautiful as Dean's blue hole. Very good. Very good. Very good. good job, Munchkin. Yeah. As always, thanks for watching and please give the video a like if you liked it. Tune in next week for the Outremer Cup. We leave our boat in the marina so that we can fly to France and be with our boat's bros and sisters. I'm still here thinking as the walls come near I'd rather keep to myself in here